Hey guys, so this is our series with Nerdy Woodworking. My name's Hobie Hill, I'm with Deep Dungeon Games, and in this series we're going to take you around to do all kinds of cool, awesome woodworking things that I do in my shop. Um, all these things you can probably do with most uh, handheld tools. I, you'll see me using table saws, uh, bandsaw, routers, all kinds of tools, but really that just elevates the product as a whole. I feel the more you put into it, the better off it's going to be. But overall, anything you can do, you can do with, you know, probably 40 bucks worth of hand tools, uh, saws, and things of that nature. Maybe some uh, actual tools that will actually, some actual power tools that will elevate the product and make you help it easier, you know, save some of the muscle. But so on this first video, I'm going to work you through on how to do a very simple dice tray. Um, it's really just a very simple product, very easy. Um, there's nothing to it, really. So watch the video. Uh, I'm going to try to give it in the details that... I hope that matter. Uh, this is my first one of this series, so whatever I can do to make it easier for you, let me know in the comments. I will uh, add any type of a link to anything that I'm using um, personally, so you can actually find it if you would like. Some of the items are more than expensive, like such as my table saw. But if you want to get it, I will also you know offer that link uh, for you guys. Without ado, so we're gonna go ahead and start the video and let me know what you think. So we'll see you in a bit. Okay, so to begin with, you're going to definitely need something to cut the wood. Now, while you can use a table saw, such as this grizzly table saw like mine, um, it's a very expensive item and a very expensive purchase. Now, on the other hand, you can actually do the same type of cutting with a skill handsaw. Now, these skill handsaws can range from about 60 bucks to about 100 bucks, and there's all kinds of different brands, and they're all going to try to basically sell you the same thing. It all really depends on how much bang for your buck you want to get. Some of them have worm drive feature, which they kind of drive themselves in essence. But I really think that with the $60 purchase, you're going to get so much use out of that skill saw. Um, definitely a purchase for every home, I think, but it's up to you. So another good item to have is a miter saw. Again, very expensive purchase uh, for the one I have. I think it cost me about two, three hundred dollars uh, I have a 12 pound or 12 inch miter saw. Uh, they get even more expensive the further you go up. They have ones that actually uh, come out towards you to cut longer pieces of wood and such. But you can also do this with a handsaw, just as simple. Uh, I just think it's a little bit faster for me to be able to do this stuff for you guys. And the last thing is you're actually gonna need is some glue and some clamps of some sort. Now I actually have seen some people do tape. I, I mean, it works, but I just like the clamp because it's gonna keep pressure on it and I can leave it and forget it and not have to come back and wonder if my tape came off. Um, I work in an environment that can be pretty dusty and dirty at times, so sometimes your scotch tape won't stick or things like that. But I've seen plenty of people use tape, so you can actually skip the quick clamps if you don't want, but you absolutely need some good wood glue. Uh, that or tacky glue works as well, but wood glue and wood goes together, right? Okay, so now that we have our description of the few items we're going to need, that's we're going to actually get in the video. But just remember, you can do every single bit of this with a handsaw, and some glue pretty much. I mean, yeah, you can be sawing for a little bit and things of that nature. The quality of my tools uh, are just a little bit better because I have to, you know, be somewhat quicker with my uh, items that I'm making. And they make an overall better product because I'm able to be concise. But if you're making one, two, ten of these, it's no big deal. You can do it by hand. I'm making, you know, 30 or 40 of them at a time. So don't be intimidated. You can go get you a handsaw and some glue for probably 15 bucks and then, and then of course, the material. Um, that's about it guys. So now we're actually going to get into the video making process of watching me go through the process of making one. Hope you guys enjoy and let me know if you have anything to add. Okay, so you can't actually see it very well, but I'll actually post this on the, on the page as well. But what we would have is a 6x6 six six inch cabinet grade plywood base, two half inch pieces of white oak, one set cut at six inches, and they already come standard at about 1.9 inches, and the other side is gonna be seven inches by the same depth and width. And that is all we're gonna do for the cutting, and then that's when we assemble it. All right guys, so we're gonna start by cutting the actual uh, base for the nice tray. So we're gonna take a table saw here, you can do this with a skill saw if you got one. So make sure our blade, I think my, my deal's off just barely. Nah, that's pretty, pretty close. I always like to double check my measurement just to make sure. Because it never hurts to be double sure. 
Okay, so we got six inches. We're just gonna do a six inch square dice tray here. Hopefully everyone can hear me. It's gonna get a little bit loud with the thing. Hopefully I will uh, edit this and it will be a lot quieter during the saw moments. I'll probably add some text. Always make sure, see this right around the table saw. You're not supposed to put your hands right there. Use a push stick if you need to. Things like that, guys. All right, so here we go. One thing you'll notice that with the uh, with the grain of wood, and this is just he's a plywood here, but with the grain of wood, with when you're not cross cutting, it does a really good job of not having to worry about splintering and things like that. But one thing you may have to worry about when you're dipping into a cross cut here, and that's where you might see some splintering. So you can actually take some tape right here, and it will actually help prevent the uh, the uh, actual splintering of the wood. But we're gonna cut one more six inch spot. Have our piece here. We're gonna double check our measurements just to make sure we're six inches square. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and cut our piece here. Got our half inch piece here. So we know we're gonna need two at six because of our base cut. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and measure at six. Maybe I should do this with a handsaw if you prefer, or if you don't have one of these guys here. Always make sure you get the, the six inches or whatever you're measuring on the, the other side of your cut, or you're gonna be as short as sixteenth of an inch. Okay. And for that, I'll just use this extra piece here since it's already the measurement that I want. Even if I'm short a little bit or a long a little bit, I know they're the same size. Okay, that's number two. Just right. There's two of our pieces. And again, if you want to actually take this and tape these ends, you'll get rid of a lot of this any of this extra stuff here. A little bit of sandpaper goes a long way too. So instead of six inches on this guy, since we know we're a half inch thick on these, we're gonna to have to have an extra little bit. So we're actually gonna go seven. Let's make sure we're accurate there. Yep, so we're right at a half inch. So we're actually going to go seven, and you'll understand why in just a second. Okay. And then... Trace that guy. Alright, so we have our pieces here. we got two at seven. And then the two at six, okay? And I'm gonna sand these down just a little bit real quick on the uh, sander here. And yep, yeah, and then I'll be back to glue those suckers together. All right guys, so here we are. We're going to glue this thing and this is really simple guys. All it is is we're gonna take our pieces, making sure that all our pieces are aligned here. Okay, now you can see why I did that one at seven because now we have this perfectly sized dice tray. Just like that. And I'm gonna flip that guy because I have an uglier end on top. Flip this guy, okay? And that way you can see that the pretty wood is all on top or the prettier wood. Okay, and I know there's some things you can do with like dovetail and things like that, but this is just supposed to be simple. So now all we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this guy here, flip this guy here, flip this guy here. Okay, make sure you guys can see. Yeah, I'm gonna push this thing up forward just a little bit. Okay, so just like that, and all we're gonna do to glue around the bottom pieces about a half inch up. You can actually write this, you know, measure it out so that way you know exactly what to put. I'm not too worried about it. I don't worry about half inches. Okay, and there just like that. So you see where I put up the glue is right there on the base edges right there. Okay. I push that this way some. So now you can kind of see what I'm talking about there where the glue's at. Okay. And then we're just going to flip these guys back to the original position, okay? So 
just like that. And then we're going to make sure it's square. And you, if you have a nail gun or something like that, you can actually pin nail these things. I really don't think it needs that. Let me get a different um, clamp real quick. dries, make sure your edges are good, just get it nice and tight. basically done right there guys that's that's pretty much it all right guys so as you see when I got some glue in here I'm actually just gonna take a q-tip and just smear that around real quick and if you want the natural look it's no big deal I said this is just simple real simple easy so if you're not careful you'll actually with a stain you'll it won't come in right okay so just remember that this is simple quick dice tray Clamps all the way around. This looks pretty good. Got that glue smeared. And that's what's going to happen. The more glue you put in there, the more smear you're going to get. Alright, guys, so I took it out of the clamps. As you can see, it's a nice, beautiful dice tray. Very simple. You can make it as complex as you want, but I feel like this is the most simple design here. Just four pieces of wood that are cut to a higher length and then the half inch center. And uh, all around, it cost me probably three bucks to make this so if you want to do that you're able to do it all right guys so I actually put a coat of poly on it and uh, put a nice piece of felt in the bottom of it there uh, absolutely looks gorgeous with that red and it's really simple guys like I said this this is probably an easy concept that anybody can do and as you can see you can hear it right there it's not very quiet if you prefer that but you probably more or less hear is more of the harder bottom right there that's probably the difference so there's really not too much difference other than I think it brings an extra little bit of style on it so hopefully you know you like this design you like this concept and you can do it yourself and uh, in the end of the actual video you'll see a lot better details I hope and uh, I'll see you guys here in a while all right so I hope you guys enjoyed that video um, I really hope I described it well enough I don't know if I did um, I want to do a lot of these videos to give you guys options to do it yourself. You know what I mean? Maybe like you don't understand conceptually like I can understand the uh, geometrics and, and things like that, you know, or maybe you just haven't really thought about it, it how simple some of this stuff really is. And you've, you know, bought that dice tray for 80 bucks, 90 bucks or whatever it is. Um, you can actually make stuff so beautiful and so great and you don't even know it. Um, 
So there's actually all kinds of options out there for wood. You can actually buy wood that's pre-cut. Um, maybe not to length, but you can actually buy it at where you don't actually need the table saw. You can actually buy pieces of wood that are two inches thick. Uh, we'll add that to the description. I know you can get things like uh, maple, red oak, poplar, um, ash, uh, zebra wood, all kinds of fascinating wood. Um, the more exotic you're going to do, the more expensive it's going to be, but it's there. And honestly, the cheapest way you can do it is buy a nice piece of uh, cabinet grade plywood and you can get just a beautiful look from it because there's all kinds of options for that. They have maple plywood, they have red oak plywood, they have uh, white ply plywood, um, and all that stuff is actually pretty and it's functional. So really, it comes down to what you want to put into it as far as aesthetics. If you're okay with the functionality versus uh, looks, then awesome. Now, I want to do another one of these guys uh, later. I think I will wait until a later date and I will actually dovetail some of these guys and show you guys how to dovetail um, your own dice trays and things of that nature. And then we're going to get into that. But I believe the next video, we're actually going to do a DM screen video. I will walk you through the process of making a DM screen for cheap. Uh, same process as this video. I'll give you the, the descriptions and everything I use. Um, hopefully, you guys will absolutely love it. And you can make your own DM screens as I show you how I make mine that I sell. Additionally, I will actually be selling these dice trays on my Etsy. If you want to uh, purchase one and support me, that would be awesome and great. I do love woodworking and I love nerdy woodworking more than I love any other type of woodworking. Um, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, pretty much all Deep Dungeon games. Uh, we're all out there throughout the deal. Um, come like us on Facebook, follow us on our projects, and let us know if you have any questions. Uh, I really want to do these videos great and I really want to, whether you're a man, woman, or child, you know, be able to use these, these simple projects. Um, to elevate your your own stuff. I know I have quite a few planned other than the dice tray and the DM screen. I'm gonna do the mini shelf back there, but I wanna do it to where um, it's more of a floating shelf style and you can put them wherever you want, in your game room, in your house, uh, wherever you can, because there's always weird spaces in your house that I feel are very unutilized. And with this process, you'll be able to really take it to the next level. Um, I'm gonna try to do these every week and see how it goes. I have no idea. If you guys will like it, I really hope y'all do. I really hope you guys can um, make some dice trays, send me some pictures. I want to see what y'all guys come up with. And again, I'm going to add some links to the, the video description. If you have any questions, you can email me at deepdungeonsinc at gmail.com. I will respond as I can. Um, or hit me up on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash games. Yep, that's all I got, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope my rambling made sense and if it doesn't if you need more descriptions if i need to be more attended to the measurements or anything like that let me know so that way i can make a better quality video for all of you guys so hobie hill with deep dungeon games with our nerdy woodworking videos and i'm out of here